Hello there and welcome to this episode 7 of this CNC rotor belt. So in the last video we assembled the, the gantry. So in this video we're going to put the x-axis screw in and make the y-axis uh, plate, main plate here up and possibly have enough time to uh, actually make the z-axis but uh, we'll see how we go. So my job now is to locate ex the exact position where the screw is going to go th through this end, these end plates and where I'm going to make the bearings. So the, the easiest way to do that is, uh, you, you know, we have these uh, linear bearings on here, bearing carriages, and all you simply do is get a flat piece of material, take them all up to one end. I'll just move the camera a bit. So what we need to do after marking our line here, which is the location of the underside of this in relation to this end, um, we work out <coughs> what the offset is going to be. Uh, and in this case it's uh, 20 millimeters off the back of this to the center of that bearing holder. And of course this runs on the screw in the middle between these two. So we've got our center mark here which like I say is 20 millimeters off the underside of this. So I've marked it out and center popped each end and now I'm just going to put a eighth inch or uh, just over three millimeter pilot hole through each of these before I take it out to the next size then which is eight millimeters then I'm going to um, cut this out with a 30, 35 I think it is 35 millimeter hole saw so that's our next job and just a reminder you do not need any specialized equipment to make a very decent CNC rotor. The only tools I've used so far is a cordless drill, actually a couple of cordless drills. I've used a corded drill and I've also used a very good wood saw with a tungsten carbide fine tipped blade to cut the aluminium. Now it's not strictly the right tool to use but you can use it to cut aluminium if you're very very careful. I must say you do that at your own risk. Like I say it's not the correct tool to use but it can be used if you're careful and you'll see that in episode one of this build. So like I say no special tool in here. Okay, so the next drill I'm going to put in is a 7mm drill, which is the size of the centering drill of the hole saw. And this actually is a... It's an inch and an eighth, or... 29, 29 millimeters. Okay, so this is actually a, a, an imperial one. Just go very carefully, very gently. A 
little bit of WD-40 makes it go a little easier. Really, don't be in too much of a hurry to do this. You'll also note what I'm doing is I'm just moving the drill like this, sort of a cam effect, and that stops the drill bogging down and it just opens, opens the hole or the cut open up and it opens the cut up just that little bit larger so it doesn't trap the cutter and it actually helps to cl clear out the, the, the cutting teeth it does a number of things and it's what I've learnt to do over the years so here we go a bit more WD-40 one of the best cutting agents certainly in aluminium that I've ever used. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. Probably a little warm. Just a shade. <laughs> okay, so really it's as easy as that. And a good tool to really clean this up to you know a really nice finish and that's a Dremel or something like a Dremel you could use a round file but uh, you know I'm all for making it easy easier for myself Isn't that beautiful? And of course we now come to the most complex area of the build of the entire project. And that is the interaction between the X and the Z axes. And how to put it together or how to fathom it out. Well, there's no easy way of doing it. When you build your machine, uh, now I'll just do a, a rough rundown, if you can hear me over the storm noise outside. Um, I'm going to have approximately 50 millimeter or two inch thickness of bed, which is going to be made up of actually a couple of lengths of this flat straight flat bar I'm going to run a couple of lengths of uh, these then uh, a 19 millimeter or three quarters of an inch of um, MDF um, and then I'm going to cut up another uh, three quarter inch thick uh, MDF intersections uh, so I can make my tea bed um, and layer it all up um, so that's, it's going to take care of two inches off the face of this uh, I may even put a piece of angle iron on here too to strengthen it all up um, haven't decided yet but it's going to be roughly two inches you know, the height of the bed is going to be about two inches off, off here and I want 200 millimeters from the underside of this to the, the base because I intend to eventually make a fourth axis to go on here as well because um, I, I like doing fourth axis work. Now I have learnt through building several of these that you need to work out to, to save yourself having 
it really, really complex and having uh, countersunk bolts into this main plate. Now this main plate is actually going on here like this. Now I'm going to below this block here is it's going to be it's going to lie up about 40 millimeter further down. Okay. Now the reason there's several reasons for that because I want to be able to connect this plate to these bearings and not interfere with the uh, drillings for the actual rails. Okay? So it's going to be something like that. I haven't got the absolute measurement worked out. Maybe up there a little bit. Um, but it's going to give me the 200 millimeters or 8 inches of clearance I want under here. Then you have to factor in, this is going to be the main mounting plate for the motor housing, which is going to go right on the very base of it there like that. Okay, and then that goes on here, and the same idea, you don't want the fixing bolt holes that are eventually going to be in this uh, casting to interfere with the bearing blocks on the underside. Uh, I like to have um, clear defined um, fixturing areas so without being interfered with uh, other devices that I'm putting on. Um, and this in turn is going to be um, 10 millimeter further down than where the rails end. Uh, and that's, that's just the way it works out. And then this in turn has a 120 millimeter of sliding ability or adjustment inside oh, that's damn heavy this this is a, a big lamp my god it's a lamp so it's going to be able to slide in there 120 millimeters so i've got 120 millimeters of adjustment here as well in the body of the spindle which is a lovely bit of kit I much prefer this one than the air cooled actually, it's going to be a lot quieter. Oh. So that's where I am at the moment. So before I can actually fix the bearings in here for this, I need to fix this Z axis mounting plate onto here and then I can mark out uh, the exact location of this um, then mount this to that plate and then use this bearing to hold this okay and then adjust this all the way at this end so it holds the shaft where exactly where the bearings got to be and just pop the holes in for the bearing and then do the same the other end and um, you know so you use the fixture plate to be able to line your shaft up to put the bearing on here and here and uh, it's perfect you know it's not binding doesn't get tight anywhere and that's how I've learned to do it you know you don't have to measure and you know drill where the holes are going to go for the bearing housing you can be very accurate by mounting this up and then adjusting this up so it carries this plate all the way up so it's on its bearing slides 
and uh, you put the bearing on. So that's my next job is to mark out or figure out actually where these go. Um, mark out these holes and get them into this plate and uh, then provisionally just screw it on there and then work out where this is going to go in the middle of it and uh, get them drilled and we'll see what happens.